Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. We are finally ready to present our 2024 real estate predictions, but we're going to do it in a different way than we've done it in the past, and frankly, everyone else does it. So what Julie has prepared for us is how many shows? I think we'll have four altogether. Four altogether. And then on the final day, what we're going to do is we're going to present something that is in the more traditional form of predictions, like top 10 predictions or whatever. But what we decided to do instead, because we know you guys will appreciate it, at least the wonkier of all of you out there will Mm -hmm. appreciate it, is we're going to share with you all of our notes and the things that we learned when researching all these predictions. Because Julie and I aren't just pulling these out of the air. Um, actually, I'm, it would be easier if we did. We could get the show done in like five sure. minutes. <laughs> but what Julie mostly did is spend a lot of time, hours and hours, researching all of this. And Julie and I are um, – we take uh, – we spend a lot of time trying to steel man all of our arguments. And that's very simple uh, concept where you come up with an idea like, you know, this is what I think. No matter what, this is what I think. Then you need to find out what the counter – the, uh, you know, the argument against your opinion is. And then you need to uh, work to try to understand that opposing argument. So – That's a way that you can check yourself on your own bias. And so we did that on all of our different points. So what we're going to be doing um, this week for the next four days is we're going to be going through particular or uh, what would we call them? Categories? Categories, factors that go into your real estate practice, things to watch. Um, and a lot of these things are interconnected. So today is going to be inventory, uh, in, or I'm supply sorry, and demand. supply and demand. And then tomorrow is going to be? We're going to talk about the impacts of inflation. We're going to talk about, you know, some of you are wondering, is it going to be a buyer's market, seller's market, so, all those things. So tomorrow it's going to be inflation. Wednesday it's going to be? Buyer or seller market. What makes that balance? Thursday it's going to be? And then uh, Thursday we're going to be talking about uh, the interconnection of these things, days on the market, list to sell price ratio, trends, all of that kind of thing. And then the final one, as you said, is going to be based on these facts, not just pontificating, not just speculating, not just our opinion, but based on everything we've presented, then we're going to say, you should expect X. Now, why are we doing it this way? Because we want you guys to be smart. Because with confidence, with knowledge, you can then set aside, you know, the the ignorance of not having that knowledge, and then you find yourself being less fearful. Because I'll summarize what we have learned, what we believe to be true. 2023, well, it already is officially the worst year in real estate, effectively in all of our professional lives, last 40 to 50 years. How about that? You guys survived it. And so we do believe, and we're seeing lots of signs, lots of indications that uh, 2024 will be a recovery, uh, if you want to call it that. It'll be a bounce back. And in many markets, the bounce back is going to almost seem like a housing boom again. So good news for all of you. I think you'll agree. Nothing better than to inject a lot of uh, optimism and even uh, fear of missing out back into the market to get people to be motivated. (laughs) Yes, I do think that 2024 is going to be the year of the agent. I think that there will be a comeback, and we're going to show you some facts why we believe that. We're not just speculating. So today, we're focusing on part one, supply and demand. And I led with this because I believe, and I think you would agree, that supply and demand really is the one of maybe the number one thing. Well, I mean, to your point, Julie, that they're really, I mean, obviously, there's an interest rate problem. So just, you know, bracket that off in your mind. When I say this, but there really isn't a, a la- the the uh, market the lack of home sales isn't from the interest rates. No, it's not. It's from lack of inventory. So if we had more inventory, even when the interest rates were a lot higher, your they, they the houses still would have sold off. All of you guys know that. So we don't have a. Uh, interest rate problem as much as we have a supply problem. And so, Julie, what does that mean to us in 2024? Okay. Speaking of supply and demand, let's talk about supply first. That points to inventory. We are still experiencing a historic lack of supply. Will this improve? Well, let's look at our current conditions. Currently, as we're coming to the end of 2023, inventory levels are seasonally low, but that is completely normal. Doesn't matter. Interest rates, doesn't matter anything. Every year around the holidays, end of the year, we lose inventory. It is kind of funny how many, um, I would say, mainstream mo- uh, news outlets are talking about some sort of colossal drop in the housing inventory and the rest of it. And then yeah. when you read the article, which you and I do, it's like 
almost to the end of the article, then they mention the fact that, oh, but this is just normal seasonality. Seasonality. Exactly. <laughs> well, and if they don't say that, they lack perspective and they're just taking one little factor, which is, you know, low inventory. Okay. So typically, uh, inventory usually peaks around mid- mid-October, falls until the year changes and then picks up in the spring, <clears throat> usually between January and February. Okay. Our active inventory, we're talking nationwide, excluding new construction, is currently around 560,000 active listings. For comparison, this week in 2015, why do we go back to that? Because that is largely seen as the last normal market, quote, normal market. There were 1,100,000, I'm sorry, 1,104,514 active listings. So basically double the inventory. I get those stats from Altos Research. Now, currently, there are 0.5%. Okay, yes, it's a half percent, but that's still kind of crazy this time of year. There are a half percent more homes on the market this week versus the same week last year. There were 58,000 new listings this week, and 10,000 of those went pending literally immediately, like within 48 hours. Here's the thing that's interesting about the statistic you just read. Okay, Mm -hmm. so in 2015, almost 10 years ago, right, there were less than half the amount of homes for sale this time. Now, I want you to think in terms of the, the absolute incredible demand. If you add up, if you start thinking in terms of the number of uh, millennials who are entering into, who are firmly into that age bracket now of wanting to buy their first home. They weren't there 10 years ago, but That's now right. they are. And if they think on the other end of the spectrum, the baby boomers downsizing or the baby boomers wanting to downsize if they are to find another home. So the amount of demand for real estate right now is vastly more than it was 10 years ago. I, I, Someone's no one's done some really good research on that yet, but Julie's about to share something with us. Yes, well, that's the next section of this is getting. We're talking about supply, then we're going to go to demand. You make a good point about millennials. Uh, so the good news can uh, it's good news that we're inching up in inventory because we're the, at the slowest time of year. We don't normally see this at all. To see any increase in inventory at this point is remarkable and hopefully a trend. So here's what this leads to. Should we worry about a lot more inventory wrecking the market and crashing prices? This is what the speculators that have no perspective and are not facting like we are will say, oh, more inventory, that means prices have to come down. Well, according to Lawrence Yun, who is he? He's the chief economist at NAR, National Association of Realtors. There are simply not enough homes for sale. Well, that's not a newsflash. All of you guys know that. He said the market can easily absorb a doubling of inventory. Now, typically, as rates come down, and here's more good news. We're, we're going to talk more about mortgages in a, in a future pod this week. But as rates come down, and they've come down from a high of 8.1% earlier this year to almost, we're almost back down to 7% based on last week's numbers, we should see more inventory come online since the typical seller is also a buyer as rates moderate lower, inventory should climb higher. Can we talk about interest rates right now? Uh, a little bit, Am because I t- we have a dedicated pod later. But. Uh, well, it is. So this is, I think, something okay. that will make sure. them feel good because sure, it's sure. interesting. It, when you and I were researching that information about interest rates, mm-hmm. we did not find a single reason to believe that interest rates would be increasing next year. That's right. Everybody was predicting, and even the Fed is admitting that they're going to start lowering rates, you know, because they're fearful of essentially of a recession or slowdown or whatever. And so the speculation as far as the interest rates go, what was the lowest number that you were reading? I, and I have many different sources, but... But uh, most economists, most uh, analysts settled on somewhere between six and six and a half. And I think that that is probably pretty accurate because what you just said, that all reports are saying we're not going to have any more rate hikes and they're going to come down. And we're already, as of last week, have almost reached 7% again. All right. So add to this, though, if you are a creative agent trying to help your buyers afford a house payment that maybe they're a little worried about, you could then ask for the seller to buy down the rate. The builders are certainly going to be doing that. Yes. So you, especially with the builders, you're going to see uh, fixed rate mortgages from a lot of the national home builders probably in the 4% range. It could happen. Yeah. It could happen. Right now, a lot of builders are in the 5.5%, which really, I mean, you think about historically. If you take all of the years of mortgage rates and put them together, they're, I believe, around 7.5, 7.8, somewhere in there. So if you can close today with a builder, and we're not talking, some of the builders are not doing buy-down rates, like 3 to one buy-downs adjusts after three years. A lot of those, especially the bigger builders, those are 30-year fixed rates. So that's a great deal. And we're going to talk about new construction on another pod this week. So at any rate, back to supply and demand. Good news about inventory. If we're inching up this time of year, it's going to also continue on that trend. So what should you watch in your market? I've got a 
series of a few questions here. And Tim, how can they find the notes in case they don't write that fast? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was about to. Just, I just was remembering that yes. we hadn't done that yet. Yeah, the notes are down below. Um, so all you've got to do is scroll below or hit uh, more or you know details or whatever, depending on where you are listening. If you're over on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Google Listen, whatever it's called, YouTube, like I already said, all those different places our podcast is featured. So all you've got to do is just open up the description. You'll find our actual notes, and, and you also find a link to join Premier Coaching. Premier Coaching is our, uh, it, frankly, it's one of our best um, coaching programs we ever developed based on the feedback, based on retention, based on the number of people that suggest other agents join it. It's definitely a home run for you as well. So scroll down below and join Premier Coaching. And you can join Premier Coaching now for free. Uh, and that's free for 30 days. But in that 30 days, you're going to receive an absolute uh, I think maybe even an overwhelming amount of free content, sure. including some scripts, your 2024 business plan, uh, and you also get a daily semi-private coaching call. So make sure you scroll down below and you definitely read the notes, definitely print them off and use them for your own information. Maybe use these for tweets, maybe use our notes for your own training of your team. But then while you're there, definitely join Premier Coaching. There you go. All right. So a series of quick questions. How do you know what's happening in your market? Regarding supply and demand, well, watch your MLS hot sheet daily and see, I call this what's hot and what's not. Some of you have asked me, how do I get a hot sheet? It may be lurking in your junk mail because you've never opened it. Um, if you don't know how to get it, call your MLS. Sometimes you have to subscribe or you have to check a widget in your MLS. But you can set it up so it's customized to you. But what yes. Julie's suggesting is you don't over-specify or be overly particular in your hot sheet. You set it up for the entire MLS. That way you can see the, the uh, trends of your entire area. I know some of you, like LA, have massive areas. But still, yeah. it makes sense that you will want to know exactly what's going on in the market. Because the MLS really is the leading edge of you know, supply and demand. It is. I'll give a quick example. You know, when we were selling real estate, we had a lot of people that said, I want to live in 43085. Well, if you were looking at the MLS hot sheet in 43085, you'll see that virtually nothing sells ever. People don't move. There's like 10 listings total, <clears throat> but there is a sister zip code, which is still the same school district. Uh, and I think it's 43235, something like that. And so you could still get what you wanted, Worthington schools, but if you weren't searching the whole MLS, you wouldn't know that you could do that. And, so remember, expand. and also keep in mind that most of the builders are not putting their inventory in the MLS. True. Uh, we have done many, many topics or many, many podcasts and a ton of uh, coaching and premier coaching about where to find uh, the lists and their literal lists of sometimes hundreds of homes, depending on your market, that are actually for sale that are not in the MLS. So make sure you get that information. Very good reminder there. Okay, so next is the inventory rising or falling in each of the areas that you work. They might not all be acting the same. Next is what price ranges are seeing the most price reductions from our coaching clients. You can tell in most areas, once you reach a certain price range, which is kind of typically medium high end, right? So, you know, if you live in the Midwest, that might be 750 to a million now. Those are seeing more price reductions, mostly because the builders are putting pressure on those resales. Okay, so next, where is all the inventory? Certain zip codes may have more or less and prices. Next is, are the average days on the market going up or down? That goes to setting expectations for your sellers. How long should they expect to take to sell? But do keep in mind the time of year. So yep. the, the market statistics during the holidays, what goes on in the market's a little wonky, you know, so just keep that in mind. And those of you in Premier Coaching, we have tons of scripts that are waiting for you with, with, that will help you to uh, get listings even during this time of year because I know the number one objection you're hearing from potential sellers is I'll wait to the spring. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're reading our scripts and our coaching and our training in Premier Coaching about how to move the sellers forward so that they, frankly, don't miss what might be a better opportunity, which is selling now versus the spring. Exactly. All right. Two more questions. What is the list to sell price ratio in the areas you work? A list to sell price ratio is simply the difference between the final list price after any price reductions and the final sale price. Is that going up or down? So for example, during the pandemic, it was not unusual to have 110% of a list to sell price ratio. In other words, if it was a million, it'd sell for a million one hundred thousand. Okay. So that has changed dramatically. Now many markets are, you know, I wouldn't say catastrophically, coming in at 98 or 98, 9% of list price. So again, setting your seller's expectations as well as for buyers. Our final question there is, what are the builders doing to promote their inventory? We're going to drill down on that on a future pod this week. 
But okay. really, we, we do believe, I think we can, we can shine light on what will be one of our top 10 predictions, that builders are going to have a housing boom for sure mm -hmm. in 2000, really 2024, probably for the next 10 years. They literally cannot build fast enough. It, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that was all about supply, inventory. Now, demand. You touched on it earlier. Demographic demand. For example, the demand from the millennials and upcoming Generation Z buyers together make up a population larger than the entire country of Japan. That is a lot of people. That's a <laughs> lot of buyers. It's not a small amount of people. The oldest of the millennial generation are now in their early 40s, and the average age of first-time buyers is currently 36. Did that surprise you? It did, because for, for years, it was more like 26. I know. I think it has to do with uh, prices. The amount of down payment it takes. People say that. People you know. point at socioeconomic reasons why. But you also got to remember, if you're living in San Francisco forever, or for example, yeah. and you have an MBA, your start salary is almost 200 grand. Yeah. But now, granted, in San Francisco, your start for a house is probably 1.5 to 2 million. Probably, yeah. But I think a lot of times the reason that you see, or the reason, one of the main reasons you see people putting off home ownership is because, frankly, a lot of the millennials took longer to get settled. A That's lot of true. them were moving more frequently, changing jobs. They were, uh, yeah. you know, they, when we got married, of course, we got married when we were super young, but a lot of uh, millennials were waiting till they had, uh, well, in their 30s or at least their mm -hmm. late 20s before they got married. So to say, well, the average homeowner, uh, first time home buyer is now, you know, 10 years older than they were in the last generation, you got to also take into consideration the rest of the factors. Because again, I just see people piling on houses are too expensive. Well, maybe, maybe they're too expensive. But I think for the most part, even if you go back to where we sold real estate in central Ohio, if the average sale price now is $400,000 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. if you look at what the average income was, the ratio, you know, it's proportional is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the way it is in most of the country. I think you're right about that. That's a good point. Uh, but back to the amount of them, there are a ton of them, okay? And the average uh, age is 36. How many of them have been sitting out the market, building up their down payment and waiting for rates to slide into the sixes? I really think they're going to end up in this, you know, maybe the high sixes first quarter. But that is a ton of pent up demand just waiting to pounce. And I can tell you from some of our coaching clients, the other issue with these um, first time buyers is many of them, because we had this long, uh, decade of the traditional 20% down 30 year fixed, they assume that they have to come up with 20% down. So one of the things that our really smart coaching clients are doing is they're having buyer seminars, they're talking, they're doing buyer outreach, letting them know about special programs, FHA, VA, first time buyer stuff, where assuming you have a job and decent credit, you can put 5% down. I, I'm going to go back to that previous point because I was yeah. just thinking there during the last, let's call it the housing boom or the whatever you want to call it, the low interest rate induced really housing frenzy that frenzy. happened. There were a lot of air quote first time buyers that, you know, millennials and whatnot mm -hmm. that were purchasing homes that now have 50 to 60 percent equity in their homes. Yeah. That's another little sub story that's no one's talking about. Mm -hmm. There is a younger generation mm -hmm. that's sitting on a mountain of home equity. Yeah. And I bet you that num the number is not small. <laughs> no, that's of, an excellent uh, point because that speaks to inventory too. Number of people, but also the amount of money that they have. So you're going to see a lot of millennials that are probably going to start climbing the housing ladder if they choose to at an accelerated pace in future or than previous generations because of the fact that they're sitting on that much equity. Well, okay. So to your point, I read, I believe it was an Altos research stat that if you purchased a home in the past two years, so you're sitting on two years worth of equity on average in the country. So that takes into effect normal markets, coastal markets on average. You have already built $100,000 in equity. It, we need to balance that because what a lot of you uh, who are listening don't realize is that real estate does not increase in value like it has <laughs> certainly since the pandemic when the low interest rates hit the market. Uh, so if you were to go back in, let's say, even 15 years, real estate, if you were lucky in most of the country, maybe excluding the, the coastal cities, it was appreciating or increasing in value at the same rate of inflation. There may have been outliers here and there, but for the most part, homes were going up in value by 2 to 3% per year, just keeping up with inflation, just keeping up with the increase in the price of property taxes and everything else, you know, as inflation inflated the 
cost of everything else. It was very, very predictable. It w- correct. But now we have the inflation that happened as a result of all the easy money that hit the market, and, and that, and then we have additional, uh, you know, a lack of inventory, and now we have an enormous amount of demand. You're going to see home prices over the next whoever knows how many decades that are going to continue to rise at an ever increasing pace. There's not going to be a drop in home values. Anyone who's believing that or looking for that, you ought to give yourself an opportunity to you steel man that and argue from the other side because I think that your logic is going to uh, take over your emotions and help you to realize that you're going to miss one of the best markets ever to be a real estate agent because of the fact that you're you know waiting around for the uh, you know the market to uh, collapse and the home values to drop. If they didn't drop already, they're not going to drop. So move forward with the idea that this market actually is going to be an incredibly strong buyers and sellers market. And we don't think there's going to be a correct supply equaling demand. Uh, that's I don't even see. Will that no. ever happen? No. And I, I have to bring up another point because I do. I read too much of this when I'm doing my research and I'm listening to uh, videos and, you know, analysts and things like that. Economists that study this more wonkishly than I do. Um, they always point out the fact that when somebody says, and this is complete pontification, you see this all over realtor boards, prices have to come down, prices have to crash because this time's just like last time, prices are so high, something has to hit the fan. Okay, that's based on nothing except for the fact that prices went up. So I can see why somebody might think that, right? Okay, so remember that last time with quotes around it, you know, when we had the Great Recession and we had the housing crash and uh, all of that, Don't forget the fact that we didn't have that demand side. Why? Because all those short sale and REO, all those foreclosure sellers, okay, they were not buyers. Now we have your traditional seller is also a buyer. That is completely, radically different with regards to our point here today, supply and demand. So back then we had, I mean, an epic amount of inventory, but at least 50% of it did not have a buyer side on the other end. Well, why? Because they didn't have the equity, obviously, because they, they just- they had crap credit. And they had, yeah, exactly. They grenaded their uh, their credit. So, yeah. And, so, that, and remember, it was the Great Recession, so we also had high unemployment. But isn't that interesting? There's another should be obvious point. Exactly. That no one really is talking about. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, back to demand. Baby boomers are still aging out of their homes. They're downsizing. They're paying cash and entering into assisted living care facilities for some of them, many of today's transactions are fueled by boomers selling their houses. Now, if you add the inventory from the boomers and the demand from the millennials and the Generation Z, rates come down, and then we're right back to a hot market, which you just said a couple minutes ago, back to, you know, a frenzy, potentially. Now, it's too soon to tell, but demographics are certainly on our side, and a good reason to see home prices continue to increase. And we didn't even talk about non-millennial and non, you know, the rest of the demographics, but they are the leading factor. If you want to know what direction the economy is going to go, just look for or a product or a business or anything else. All you got to do is look on the, the, you know, the total addressable market, the TAM as they call mm-hmm. it, right? And if you see that there's essentially, you know, five buyers for every one product or one widget, you can pretty much surmise that, that va- the value of said product is going to go through the roof. Very simple math, right? Yeah. Okay, so the transactions our coaching clients report are reflective of all these trends. Additionally, there will always be buyers and sellers who are relocating, divorcing, and inheriting property. Add to this the amount of first-time buyers, and you have demand which outstrips supply currently. I'm not even talking about into 2024. Currently, demand outstrips supply at a rate of three to one uh, as of today. So that's three offers for every actual sale. And let, so what that means is we could triple inventory, and it still wouldn't be a buyer's market. That's good news, especially if you're primarily a listing agent. So, and I would say as a buyer agent as well, because you'll have more inventory. Now, what should you be doing right now? I wrote down three points. Number one, proactively speak with 100% of the people in your database to find out who is a first-time buyer or has first-time buyer kids, who are relocating, downsizing, waiting to build, or divorcing. These are your most motivated sellers right now. And there's going to be, a, I think, a palatable surge that's going to follow the interest rates 
probably in the first half of next year. Absolutely. That's definitely what I'm mm-hmm. getting from coaching clients, from the feedback on just all the different things you and I pay attention to. There's, there is absolutely an enormous amount of pent up demand. People that took themselves out of the market for this reason or that, number one being lack of inventory. When that Im- inventory starts coming online again, you guys better be ready. <laughs> yes. And proof of this, and I'm going to drill down on this when we talk about mortgage rates later this week, but proof of this is over the past four weeks, as interest rates have been getting lower and lower, you know, incrementally, there's an exact correlation to mortgage applications. And before that, when we were really in the high sevens into that low eight range, we had super low or basically static mortgage applications. Nobody was interested. As soon as they started inching down, applications went up. It's simple math. Right? Now, rem- remember, guys, Premier Coaching is, is the sales end, right? This Julie and I are giving you statistics. We're giving you facts. We're sharing with you the information uh, so that you have confidence because knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. And when you have this information and you actually have the confidence to then you will have then the confidence to move forward. Well, move forward with what if you don't actually know how to have meaningful conversations with the prospective buyers and sellers? That's the point of Premier Coaching. Do not allow yourself to be lulled into complacency from feeling in any way pessimistic about what 2024 is going to be for you. If you did not have a great year in 23, well, you're part of a large club, but here it is, the reality. You are going to have another lousy year unless you get your head straight about the fact that you are in the right place and at the right time and your mar- and the market is going to be there for you to serve many buyers and sellers, but you need to have the skill set and how to generate the leads, pre-qualify them, present the whole nine yards. All the rules have changed with regards to the buyer agent commission splits and the uh, lawsuits and whatnot. We've talked a lot about that on this podcast. We're talking about that a lot in Premier Coaching, but I'm here to tell you that the demand for uh, caring, competent, skilled agents to help people transact is going to be like never before. You just have to make it so that you earn the right to be of service to all those potential buyers and sellers. And that comes from your skill set, not the number of TikTok videos you've created. Very well put. Okay. Two more uh, things to do. And then we're going to talk about price reductions. Uh, Next thing is connect with your past clients and center of influence before somebody else does and before they buy an open house that they're going to this weekend. Or a new build. Or new build or or sign with a new build rep in the development they've been haunting every weekend. If you are not talking with them, you are not able to be outraged when you find out they bought something without you. And then what happens when they buy something without you? They probably listed with not you. Okay, next, speak with at least 10 expired sellers and let them know there's still demand and find out whether they still have to sell. Old expired are gold mine. By the way, we have a link in the show description for you guys to join Red X, which is our preferred uh, partner for helping you find those older expired leads, even the new ones. Red X is really select the way it works. You basically just turn on your computer in the morning and there are all the new expireds and they've already hunted down all the phone numbers and, uh, and making sure that they weren't relisted and everything. But I'll give you guys a little hack to all of it. Ask for the old older expired space. There's a lot of expireds that expired six months, 12 months ago, where the sellers have no clue that their house is worth, in some cases, substantially more. And maybe before their problem was the price. Maybe their house was overpriced by, you know, five or 6%. Well, guess what? Now they can get that, you know, previously inflated price because now that's the market. So yeah. definitely call all those folks. And I'll give something else, Julie, which we mm-hmm. should talk about. We sure. don't really do a lot with commercial, really, but there's going to be no uh, crash in commercial. All the people that are predicting a real estate crash in commercial, <laughs> Commercial, where the hell is it? it hasn't happened yet. Mm-mm. That's another honey hole, right? Exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah. Lots of our coaching clients have discovered that. Okay. So see if you can help those expireds accomplish their goals this time around. And again, they might also buy with you. We did do a very popular podcast. I think it was one of our most popular downloads, which was like top five or top eight secrets about expireds. And it wasn't just about price. It was other things that may have caused them to expire. So Julie, let's talk about price reductions. Yes. Okay. So what about price reductions? Doesn't that mean that prices are crashing? Again, off the headlines, right? Now, this isn't directly tied to supply and demand, but we're only sharing this with you for the sake of sort of counterbalancing the mostly negative narrative about housing. And I have no idea why mass media loves to talk about housing as some sort of black hole, because it's absolutely not. It is so funny to me. I I will say it's funny. It makes me laugh. Maybe Mm -hmm. it shouldn't, but it does. All these naysayers about housing and then having them begrudgingly admit that home values actually increase month over month pretty much every single month in 2023. Absolutely. I mean, it is the single greatest wealth builder out there, not just for real estate professionals. We all know that. But for Americans, for homeowners. you got to honestly ask yourself, where my mind goes, frankly, is there's a lot of folks that are writing those articles 
for those particular news outlets that cannot that are living in very expensive Manhattans and San Francisco's sure. who do not make enough money to afford homes, and maybe that biases their opinions. They subconsciously want prices to come down and rents to come down and mortgage payments to come down because their personal economics make them want to. Right. But to believe this and hearing people say things like, well, housing is no longer going to be part of the American dream. I mean, they said that same crap back in 2007, it's 2008, so and they're starting to say it now too. So when you tune in to any of that negativity, sorry for just sprinkling some of it on you now, <laughs> but when you tune into any of it, how do you feel after having listened to it? Do you feel optimistic, pessimistic? Do you feel like learning the things necessary for this new market? Do you feel like, you know, hiding out in your bunker and waiting for this, the clouds to clear? Do yourself a favor, especially over the holidays, and do a complete and total media-free, you know, purge. Uh, other than this podcast, <laughs> no, you can keep us. stop listening or stop reading and stop consuming all sources of information and allow your brain to go back to a, a place of almost stasis so you can then start tuning in to what your highest and truest purpose is, which is being of service to other people, because there you're going to find some calm. You definitely, definitely, more than ever, need the skill set necessary in this market to not just thri mm -hmm. uh, you know, survive, but to thrive. More than, I think, certainly the last market. Last market, let's be honest. Buyers were going to buy with or without you because the interest rates were so low and because they had fear yep. of missing out. House sellers were not that particular who they were going to list with because they knew the house was going to sell with or without you because they knew it was a super hot seller's market. None of those things are necessarily true now. Even if a buyer does have FOMO of missing out on the market, you're still going to have to have the skill set of knowing how to find that home for sale mm -hmm. that's not on the MLS. Again, that leans into coaching. Yes. So what about price reductions? Doesn't that mean that prices are crashing? Well, some argue that seeing so many price reductions must mean that prices are crashing. However, price reductions are only marginally higher than historical norms. What? The headline in New York Times was housing prices are dropping. I know. I know. First of all, by how much? I think the average price reduction is something pathetic, like $5,000. Exactly. Okay, so historically, if we crash all, put all the years together, about 30% of all homes for sale will eventually reduce their price before they actually go pending, no matter what type of market it is. When mortgage interest rates rise and demand decreases, the percentage of homes for sale that reduce their prices will increase. This explains why you're seeing more reductions now than you did during the crazy pandemic market with those low interest rates. Interestingly, though, in 2023, with higher prices and higher rates at the same time, the percentage of price reductions has actually been lower than what happened in 2022. In 2022, 43%, remember, historically, normally, it takes about 30% of all homes will reduce, but in 2022, 43% home, of homes for sale had to reduce their price versus only 39% this year. This indicates that, yes, sellers still start out higher than the market expects, but this is moderating and moving back towards norms. Julie, look at that statistic for a second. I'll um, argue that that is more from agents not knowing how to price houses in a market that is sure. rapidly changing. So to say, well... You know, think about what I'm saying, listeners. So in 2022, 43% of all the homes had a price reduction. It's because in 2022, most of the agents didn't know how to price homes and were overpricing homes. And that's when rates started to really go up too. Right. And it, stymied the market. You know, we had fewer mortgage applications, but less my, demand. But my point is, is that they weren't knowing how to do a CMA yes. correctly. And they were doing a price adjustment to essentially make it so that they're more in alignment with the market's expectations. It wasn't necessarily because of... Uh, you know, honest price erosion, it was more a function of agent skill developing yeah. well, in real time. That's right. Because, you know, I have to say it's not entirely their fault because for over a decade, you really could throw a dart at the wall <laughs> or you could take your highest And this. This was a strategy, right? Back when things were hotter, here's what we would do. You would take the last highest comp and you'd add 10%. Because by the time you sold, you probably could get that. Or because you had multiple offers, we would go 10% over. And you would actually appraise for that because by the time you closed, you'd have another comp that high. We can't do it like that anymore. So, so guys, this is the first part of five shows that we're going to be doing on our 2024 real estate predictions. And on Friday, we're going to do a summary, probably our top 10 real estate predictions. But hopefully what you're taking from listening to Julie and I speak is you're taking a sense of excitement. You're taking a sense of optimism. You're taking, you're, you're walking away or, you know, maybe you're walking while listening to us um, with a sense of, I think in a lot of ways, maybe even more um, 
I don't know, what would you call it, Julie? I, I can sense it personally where I feel more exuberant almost. Yeah, optimistic. About, uh, optimistic. Mm-hmm. I, we're overusing that word, but I, I, it's something beyond – between exuberant and optimistic. Encouraged, yeah. Whatever that word yeah, is, right? sure. That's how I'm personally feeling. I know that's how the market's feeling too, largely. And that feeling that you are sensing intuitively is correct because that's what's headed your direction. If you're not feeling that way – then consider basically getting better information because statistically, based on what we're sharing with you, there's no reason to believe that uh, 2024 is not going to be what will be, for many of you, a significant change in the direction of your incomes and also your real estate businesses. And also keep in mind that 2023 was the worst year ever. And if that is indeed the bottom, which we believe it is, mm-hmm. then typically what you see is you are going to see not a hockey stick necessarily, but a pretty meaningful progression in terms of more inventory coming for sale, more real estate transactions. Are you going to be part of that or are you going to be sitting on the sidelines? You need to make that decision. Well, and you have to take control of that now. Don't wait. I, I think, you know, the, the cautionary tale to this, because I agree with you 100%, and I did try to steel man this. I tried to look for reasons for these stats to just be haywire, okay? But they're not. This is all, we're, we're doing our predictions based on fact. So the caution about this, because we are being uh, exuberant and optimistic and, you know, showing you the facts, is I don't want you guys to wait for you to just wake up and then the market's hot again. It's not going to be like that. It's right. not going to be just the door opens and now it's exactly like, you know, a crazy market. I don't believe it's going to go that way. I think we're going to have um, definitely more sales. We're going to talk about that. We're going to see more inventory. Demand is certainly strong. But I don't think that you're just going to open your eyes one day and your, you know, your voicemail is going to be full of come list me, right? Where, where you have the advantage is when you have the knowledge of what's going on in the market. Julie gave you some very, you know, very important breadcrumbs for you to have that knowledge. Because as traditionally what happens is real estate is one of the slowest moving industries on planet That's Earth. That's my point, yeah. And most of the brokers, the office managers, and the agents are still going to be stuck in the quagmire of, the, say, the middle of 2023, even as we're in the first quarter of 2024. Don't get stuck there. Realize that the market is changing. It's a Julie's point. It's not going to be off and on like a light switch. Yeah. It's going to change slowly, but it's going to change. And you need to be uh, enjoying and benefiting from that change as, so that, frankly, you can help more people and make more money. Yes, and evidence by this is, and granted, my personal coaching clients, my one-on-one elite coaching clients, are a sliver of all of our coaching clients, but I can say, coming off of last week's calls, uh, maybe not 100% of them, but I would say maybe 85% of them took new list, not just listing, but took new listings last week. Okay, so think about the time of the year. Those people, why didn't they wait until spring? Because they have specific needs. Some of them are building, some of them are relocating. There is inventory coming online. The question is, is it going to be your inventory? So the ones that are being proactive now and not waiting for the year to flip, not waiting for it to be spring, they're already seeing the results of their hard work. So don't wait. You've got to get into action. And if you're not sure what to do, how to do, when to do it, that's where Premier Coaching comes in. All right. That's your homework. If you've not yet joined Premier Coaching, go ahead and do so. And also the link for to get, I think it's $150 discount for Red X is in our show notes as well. In the meantime, thank you for keeping this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in the United States. We've had over well over 20 million downloads of this podcast. Uh, It is our distinct honor to have earned the right to be your, you know, I'd say real estate trainers. And if you join Premier Coaching, your real estate coaches. Uh, Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show. Remember, this week is all about 2024 predictions. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.